Back at the University of Texas, Victoria Horner shows a chimp how to operate a puzzle box to get a treat. First, she taps. Then, she slots. Next, she pokes. The chimp copies fairly well and gets the sweet. This game we're going to play is about this special box I brought, all right? There's a gummy bear. It's your turn. Children copy the actions much as the chimps did. Oh, you got him! All right, there's a gummy bear. Good job. The second box that I show the chimpanzees is this one, and it's identical to the opaque box, except that it's made out of material which is see-through. Only now is it obvious that the tapping and poking don't achieve a thing. The box has a false ceiling. The chimps cut to the chase. They skip the needless steps. For the apes, it is all about the treat. What this study shows is that apes don't just mindlessly ape. They also understand something more about cause and effect. We found something quite surprising. The children were predisposed to copy, even when it meant that they were doing something that was really rather silly. So this seems a little like the chimps are outsmarting the kids in this particular study. There he is. You got him out. Why do children imitate slavishly? The root of the children's behavior is the fact that they view me as a grown-up, possibly as a teacher. That children expect to be taught is a vital difference. What we need to do is we need to find some way of getting young people to see the world where the way we want them to see it. Mm -hmm. So that by the time they become adults, they are completely... Um, following the reality we want them to believe in. Someone might say, well, they might not have it like, but you know the ideal thing? What we do is we have a system where we take children away from their parents at least five days a week, all day, from about the age of four and five, and we have control of their minds until they're about 17, 18. That would be ideal. But well, of course, that's what happens. Yeah. It's called the education system. Yes. And it's indoctrination. You think the purpose of education is reading, writing, and arithmetic? The purpose of education is to change the thoughts, actions, and feelings of students. Now there's a new movement for universal pre-K for every child in America. They should have a chance to start school before kindergarten. Isn't that a wonderful idea? Parents are being told that we're not capable of facilitating our child's learning. Why are we going to let the system that's already failed our children educationally in this country, K through 12, why are we going to let them start with our four-year-olds? From his first days of power, Hitler knew that he had to bring the children of Germany under his control. The future of the Third Reich rested on their shoulders. Fly free.
When Hitler came to power on the 30th of January 1933, he promised an end to the unemployment and poverty that had plagued the country. In its place, he would create a proud new Germany. It was a vision that struck a chord with the nation's youth. Young people, the future will be in your hands if you are able to sustain the kind of energy and focus that you showed on this campaign. I promise you that America will get stronger and more united, more prosperous, more secure. You are going to make it happen. And Michelle and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Faith, unconditional faith that the Führer would do things right. He was represented in those days as God, well, akin to God. And that's how we saw him. Obama's gonna change it, Obama's gonna lead them. Yes, we can, yes, we can, yes, we can, yes, we can, Hitler wanted to produce a generation of dedicated and ruthless Nazis. A generation who could realize his dream of conquering the world. If you reflect back upon your own experiences within the public school system, you will begin to notice how there were many subsystems in place that were designed to not only restrict your individuality, but also to ensure your submission to authority. You will also recall that you were given little time to think for yourself or to think about issues that were really important to you. While in school, you were inundated with trivial information that had and still has very little relevance to your existence as a creative being. And even after enduring the utter exhaustion of the school day, you were then given homework to complete another indoctrination procedure enforced to further strip away valuable moments that you could have used to think about your life, why you are here, and what you hope to accomplish while here. Therefore, instead of discovering and realizing your true purpose and power, you were assimilated into the collective consciousness of the hive. It was the institution itself that defined your purpose which was to follow instructions, memorize senseless data, relinquish your autonomy as a creative being, and comply to authority via the submission of your consciousness to the hive mentality. Think for yourself. Question authority. Think for yourself. Question authority. Throughout human history, as our species has faced the frightening, terrorizing fact that we do not know who we are or where we're going in this ocean of chaos, it has been the authorities, the political, the religious, the educational authorities who attempted to comfort us by giving us order. Rules, regulations, informing, forming in our minds their view of reality. To think for yourself, you must question authority and learn how to put yourself in a state of vulnerable, open-mindedness, chaotic, confused vulnerability to inform yourself. 
Think for yourself. For yourself. Question authority. Think for yourself. Question authority. Question authority.